STEM is an integrated um, science, technology, engineering and mathematics course. It's specifically designed to use problem-based, project-based learning approaches using also inquiry-based learning. It's designed to teach concepts in an integrated way where we have science, mathematics, technology and engineering as seen as being one thing rather than individual silos. Yeah, we began by looking at uh, STEM as being an initiative that would involve young people in problem solving and learning from a different platform. Um, at Maitland Grossman, the structure we use is a three teacher model. Um, in that we have a mathematics teacher, a science teacher and an engineering or technology teacher that was, would deliver the course. So when we developed the course, we developed it in, in such a way that we knew where the, the, uh, the different components were going to fit. So we knew if we did this particular unit that it would have the mathematics component, have the science component, and have the technology and engineering component built in. The course is quite unique in regards to that collaboration between the, the four areas of STEM and that they find that um, the different uh, areas are, are complementary and they don't necessarily repeat. Uh, I know from talking to a number of the other teachers as well um, in the other areas that it gives um, the science and mathematics um, areas more scope to explore the practical nature of their courses. The teachers don't teach the maths in isolation or the science in isolation. They work together to make sure that whatever they do in their classroom complements. One of the, the key things that we're doing here, and I haven't seen it replicated, and it's a really important part of what we're doing here, is trying to encourage girls to do engineering, science and mathematics. The teaching of the STEM course is totally different to what the teachers who are mathematicians would do in a maths classroom. It's different to what the, the science teacher would do in a science classroom. And it's certainly different to what a technology teacher would do in those classrooms. So we're starting to evolve with a whole process of different pedagogies. Uh, today we worked on a structure. We had to make a structure that could hold the weight of a tennis ball and the force of, of, the wind, of wind. Our structure was very solid and it withstood the highest um, wind force. We worked well as a team. We collaborated and we used each other's strengths to create a strong structure. We're given more freedom and more blue sky thinking. We're allowed to think outside the box and that's encouraged. STEM puts maths into more practical terms so we can use it in everyday life more than just in the math classroom. I haven't really thought about university yet, but maybe something in the engineering industry. But it does require a great deal of cooperation between um, a number of head teachers and also the executive. We do fund it from our global budget because we believe in it. One thing that's made it successful here is actually having a, a coordinator that, that brings it all together. So as the head teacher teaching and learning, uh, I am the head teacher in charge of iSTEM. Timetabling and staffing has not been an issue because we've put it as a priority in our school in terms of young people, that this is a priority. If we are going to change the way in which young people relate to um, engineering and problem solving in maths and science and engineering, we've got to be prepared to give it a priority. This also means that different teachers get the opportunity to teach iSTEM. So in the timetable structure, the teacher who didn't teach it previously um, may not be available. So we work with the head teachers and we bring more staff in so that they have the opportunity to uh, learn what's happening in the course and be able to deliver it. I could see that the future growth and employment for these students is going to be in the STEM areas. And I could, I could tell by the fact that the um, subject choices that students were making that the employment opportunities were not going to be there in um, these other industries. We've got a downturn in manufacturing, but the manufacturing industry is watching this program very closely. We believe our kids are headhunted by the industries. Our industries are coming to us now and they're saying, we want to look at your kids. We want to see because you are trained to have a mindset that the industry wants. The strength that, that, that is, comes with the program comes from often from the industries themselves as too. They are saying to us, you know, um, we want to link with Grosman. We want to work out what's going on in this program. STEM has influenced the career choices because Coming into STEM, I thought, you know, yeah, I might do engineering or something like that when I, when I leave school. But now, having done both engineering and STEM as my electives, it's, I've really, yeah, 
I'm pretty certain that that's what I want to do. STEM is taught very differently. Well, here it is at least, and it's, I think it's taught really well here without a lot peer-to-peer -peer level teaching rather than the teacher stands out the front and tells the students exactly what to do. They, we get a lot more freedom, and I think that's a great thing. We had to make a structure 450 millimetres tall and withstand the wind force. Previously, we had, we've had we done lots of different things. We made one that had to support a marshmallow and we had to make, it was kind of like a bridge, but it had to be a table, but we used a bridge design to support it. Um, we used lots of triangles, but it was the strongest of its type. As other people used, um, just rolled up the newspaper and then put the weights on top, which was stronger, but you know we didn't think outside the box that much. So we have set um, sophisticated assessment tasks that are, that are developed and we break them into the three uh, main areas. So science, um, science, technology and engineering together and mathematics. So we all did different components. They are reported as areas of learning on the report um, so that the um, parents and the students can see how they've, how they've achieved in each of, the, each of the three areas and that is reported on, on the A to E scale. In the program, the mathematics, the science and technology and engineering components are all there. So it's just a matter of um, they, they sign off as they, they go through there and at the end, we, I put it all together and make sure that's there. So they have three different documents that they're, but they'll only register off on the parts that they're working on. We also do um, feedback surveys. So students are asked what they like and dislike about the subject. And that feedback has been used to improve the program each year. So the teachers are encouraged to handwrite on the program any modifications they might have made to the program. When at the end of the year I go through and I look at that registration, I look at those programs, that gives me a way in which we can tweak and improve the program based off that. So those good teachers who are teaching that are taking some of the ideas they're getting from the STEM program back into those areas. It's really very interesting in a traditional school like this, they have an ownership of the STEM program outside their faculty. And that's really unusual because high schools are very, very much in their own little areas and, and they have a comfort zone. These teachers have created a new comfort zone, which is STEM.